Hi, Paul back with back. So in the previous video, I discussed the drought in Cape Town and I showed where the jet streams were situated and I used Earth Null School to cycle back uh, a week or so and just show you, you know, they're, they're, basically the clouds are going all around, but they're just avoiding Cape Town. We're not getting any rain there. A city's gonna run out of water um, probably by the second week of April. A bit later, if people start conserving better or earlier, if uh, people proceed at the current consumption rate. Um, so now I'm gonna go to Paris where they have the opposite thing. There's uh, been too much rain and uh, lots of flooding along the uh, river. So if I type Paris, France, and I do a search, and we zip over there, this is a great uh, app. You know, if you don't have it on your machine, you should install it. You don't have to have Google Earth Pro. You can just put Google Earth, the basic version, on there. There's apps for the uh, smartphones, of course. So here is Petty. Okay, so just to have an idea, it's, you know, there's, it's that location. So then we can go, you can get the latitude and longitude, you know, of Paris, right? And then you can go over to Earth Null School and you can enter the, you know, move this, click on different areas until you're very close to where Paris is. You can zoom in on the map to the finest scale to get more accuracy. But basically here's where we are in, Paris, we're looking at, um, the, the app comes up like this, and we, we're clicking total precipitable water. And we'll back up a day at a time here. Okay, and you can see how the numbers change. Okay, I'm going a day at a time. Now it's important to go, you know, if you're in the Arctic, you can go at a day at a time. It's not so bad because it's always dark there, right? Not much uh, daily change in temperature. The sun doesn't come up at all. But here, we'll go back. I don't know how far to go back. Let's say somewhere here. Okay, and now we wanna look at, uh, so you can see these numbers fluctuating. Well, let's look at the clouds over Paris, okay? So, so he, now we'll go forward. Okay, so there's lots of clouds, lots of rain, and we'll go forward. And what you can see is these bands of water, you know, they get a day off there, right? There is more change from day to day. If I advance three hours, well, let me get a nice band of water before I advance. So nothing there, there's a band there. Here we go, there's a band here. So let's go back a few hours and see how this thing, okay, so this thing is shifting. Okay, so, so now we're going back in time. We're going forward in time. So January 24th, 1 p.m. local time in Paris. We got this nice band of uh, water, clouds, clouds. Uh, so lots of precipitation. Um, and we pass through that, that band kind of tends to stay there for many hours. Lots of rain in this period of time over in Paris. And then we lose the band. Let's go forward now a day at a time. A day at a time, here's another band. You can go through three hours. Okay, sticks around, is very persistent. There'll be fluctuations between day and night. Okay, it's still there a day later, still here, uh, January 30th. And then finally the system is, is, is leaving. So we've had uh, record flooding of the river, the main river, the Seine through Paris, and uh, you know they could use some of that water in South Africa. This is a problem with the precipitation cycles, the hydrological cycles changing because the temperatures are changing, the jet streams are changing, and uh, we're getting more and more of these extreme weather events of. The, the frequency, severity, and duration of these extreme weather events is increasing. And one thing it can do is create a huge drought and cause the city of Cape Town, 3.7 million people to run out of water in a few months, and it can flood out other parts. It's just part of the climate casino. We're living in a climate casino. As the jet streams become more broken and fractured and distorted and chunks fly off them, uh, we get all this bizarre weather. It's a, 
it's all over the planet, like I said. Okay, so that's uh, France. Now, I showed you in the last video all about how these, these uh, jet streams, um, temperature, how this is today, how this massive hot brand, if you like, of air is penetrating right up into the Arctic, just north of, just on, well, just missing the North Pole, bringing the North Pole close to zero, but slightly under, but regions up here up to a couple of degrees and doing a number on the sea ice, which I discussed. Okay, so I, I want to talk about the jet streams a bit more because they're crucial. So if you just Google, Skeptical Science has some good articles on the jet streams. This is a site, this is a pretty good site. You know, they're pretty accurate usually. Uh, they, they were completely off in this case. Shock horror jet stream crosses equator. I'll talk about that more in a minute. I mean, that was a completely, they're, they're a great site, but they, they messed up here. You know, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be proven o over time. Uh, we'll see. So there's, all, there's a lot of good sites here. So I clicked on a number of these links and uh, let's have a look at what they say. So is warming in the Arctic behind this year's crazy winter weather? This was just posted on January 1st, a couple days ago, uh, Jennifer Francis, guest author from Rutgers. Huge bills in 2017 and climate change, the Arctic warming, it's like opening the refrigerator door, all of this cold air has just broken down through to North America. So here we are, if you're on the West Coast, you get this, these hot temperatures. This is the anomaly, so in, in degrees Celsius. So fif up to 15 degrees Celsius, warmer than normal over here, and 15 degrees Celsius colder than normal here. You know, um, and if there's a sharp division between there, these areas, and watch out, intense storms, large temperature difference, means a large pressure difference, means very high winds, they get spinning up, and we've actually had some tornadoes in the, in the US recently. You know, along they'd be along the border of these of this division line, okay. Um, so this is uh, this is a good article. It gives you a good um, a good idea of what's happening this winter. Why it's so friggin' cold in Ottawa, where I am up here on the east coast and stuff, and also why we get this this weather whiplashing for, to temperatures above zero, then below zero, then above zero. The I had to take my youngest son to the emergency earlier on in the week because he jammed his uh, pinky playing basketball. I had to wait four and a half hours. It was four and a half hour wait in the, in the emergency room because, because we'd just gone through one of those weather, weather wilding swings up to above zero. So stuff, the snow was all melting and stuff. Then we had a flash freeze, it all froze. Everybody walking wiped out and fractured bones and stuff. So. Well, like it was standing room only in the waiting room at the Children's Hospital, CHEO, Children's Hospital of Eastern Ontario. Um, and there were chairs in the hallways and people were packed and it was, it was unbelievable. And it's just, you know, there's real implications of these, of this stuff happening. You just have to look for it. Okay, it's pretty easy to find. So very good article. You know, this is the, uh, what's called the ridiculously resilient ridge and we get this sort of pattern We've got pattern repeating here, um, you know, takes two to tango. I talked about this uh, idea in, for the ridiculously resilient ridge. I talked about this in one of my AGU videos. Okay, so this is a good article. Um, Polar vortex and the cold snap in a warming world. This was posted, I believe, uh, yeah, January 2nd, the beginning of the year. Okay, so much the same thing. Um, this is a normal situation with the polar vortex or the jet streams, depending on the altitude you're looking at. What happened is when you get these incursions of very warm air coming in, slicing in, these ridges coming deep in, it shatters the polar vortex uh, like this, and that causes spillage of cold air 
out of the Arctic, get a warm Arctic and cold land all around. Okay, um, here's some of the science. This is a stable polar vortex in the stratosphere, stable jet stream, strong, warm, hot and dry, hot and humid air here, cold and dry air here. There's a good separation between them and now we get this craziness. But these things are, these things are becoming so distorted that big chunks are coming off the ridges, big chunks are coming off the trough, and it sends these uh, vortices all over the place. Well, watch out if you happen to be under one. You loot your city's in the climate casino and you luck out. Okay, so there's lots, very good paper here. Again, if you just Google skeptical science jet streams, you come across these. Here's one from 2015 with Frances when she was first explaining this phenomena of this very cold air coming down, spilling out of the Arctic, coming down over North America. You know, this is a trough, this is a ridge, very hot air under the ridge, very cold air here. Okay, uh, the slow drunken path. And this is the same sort of video here. This is kind of cool, a little magnifying glass. Um, and then there's, a, there's some videos and you get these stuck weather patterns and stuff, an excellent article. Now, this is the article here. Again, if you Google skeptical science and you come down here, this is where they really messed up. Shock horror jet stream crosses equator. So, and this, I actually haven't read this, or I forgot, you know, this was, this was from uh, July of 2016. Is that right? Yeah, I guess so. July of 2016. And I showed how the jet stream was crossing the equator. And there's much, much better diagrams. They picked one of the crappiest diagrams here. Uh, there's much better pictures in the videos that went viral. I think 450,000 views now, you know, where it's coming normal to the equator. This is, this is like uh, more like monsoonal type flow. You know, if it's almost parallel to the equator, this happens with monsoons, but not the, what I was talking about. So anyway, they say some, some things here. They talk about Scribbler's article and my article, uh, you know, my, my uh, you know, I was basically saying it was a global climate emergency, which I still say is happening. And th this'll, this'll come to pass. People will be saying this soon. You know, you say things too early, you know, they say, oh, this can't be right. And they attack you, you know, the Washington Post did and stuff. And then two or three years later or whatever, years later, they, they, they start saying, we're in a global climate emergency and they completely ignore you. They completely ignore that you were saying this years ago. But I mean, that's just the way the cookie crumbles, right? The, the science community is, is very uh, hierarchical and stuck up that way, right? If you're not in the group, right? Uh, you know, then um, you're, you're uh, you know, they, they just try to ignore you and then they steal your work. I mean, that happens all the time. Like you see terms like, there's conferences now on things called weather whiplashing, right? What's happened in the Arctic doesn't stay in the Arctic. All these terms I should have trademarked, you know, four or five years ago when I came up with them. Well, they're now being used a lot more. Um, so anyway, they say they're, we're both, Scribbler and I, we're both well-known bloggers and generally both have an overall quite positive reputation. But not here, you know, the Post did an article, but it does say that I stuck to my stance and promised a rebuttal. I should get the, them to put the rebuttal in skeptical science. So um, anyway, so that's what we have. Um, and in fact, since I did this original video calling, saying unprecedented jet stream crosses equator, question mark. And there was a big question whether there was a question mark or not, big argument over that. Right. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, since this video, I did do a rebuttal to the post, which they published. So you can just search for that and see that. Also, um, I've done a number of videos since when the jet stream is very strongly crossing the equator. In fact, I did a video where the jet stream is crossing the equator almost around the entire circumference of the Earth. It looks like it's crossing almost everywhere, right? Not only is it crossing, but it's crossing everywhere. Like, is this unprecedented? I, I think so, you know, but the post, uh, they, they, only, they only did the article because the video started going viral. When it was 30, 40, 50,000 views after, you know, a day or so, then they, the papers took notice. So I recommend that you look at the chain of events in that. And in a few years, they'll be having lots of papers on how the jet stream's crossing the equator. So anyway, thank you for listening.